Hey guys, my name is Angel. Today I'm going to show you how to automate your content generation workflow using Airtable, Make.com, and Webflow. Now we're going to integrate the three using Airtable as our database, Make, to integrate all our different applications. And Webflow is just the CMS of choice or the that we're going to use for hosting our blog content. So let's get started. So you can see I have a nice visual here within Make. And this used to be formerly called Integromat, I believe. And we are simply here connecting, utilizing a webhook. And the webhook is going to be created in our Airtable. This is how we communicate with Airtable and Make. So that way it can feed in information from Airtable into the OpenAI's API and generate content based on our instructions. So you can see here, I have this Airtable space built out and this can be customized to how your workflow works and use even more additional inputs to get a better output as, as your end result. So you can see I have my blog title, categories, subcategories, a place for hero images, the status of a specific piece of content. And this status is going to be used to create or trigger the different workflows that we want to launch. So then we have our idea description, content outlines, blog content, our editing notes, which you can use and leverage the edit completion prompts using OpenAI to make edits to our actual blog content, our slug, or SEO summary, or SEO meta description. This is going to be generated using AI as well. So we can have a field for that, our publishing date, our Webflow ID, a link to the page, and when the actual article or, or post was updated. So if we make any changes and through Airtable that gets updated right to Webflow, and then we'll get a call back updating our Air record, our Airtable record <laughs> with the proper updated date, right? So when something was changed. So I just chose the topic of just electronic vehicles and some of the subcategories or the categories here I have is ownership of an EV, maintenance and news around EV. And then we have things like buying station, I mean, buying options, charging stations, tax benefits of EV ownership, troubleshooting under EV maintenance, repair costs, right? Product launches. So these are just different subcategories within the specific category in the EV space, just so you can guys get a general understanding. You can also see we have images here. This is using Dolly to generate these hero images, just to get some idea, some creation, creative ideas and ideation in terms of the final product. I think it's good to have this, but it also can be incorporated into your workflow if you actually do want to use the direct images from Dolly. Sometimes if you notice, they have some interesting things going on when it comes to text within the image. So I wouldn't highly recommend using that when it comes to keeping the text into the actual image. It moves more along the lines of graphic design or vector images like these, like one of these examples here, it may be okay. But yeah, then you have one here that's, you know, has a lot of words associated with it, but obviously they're not spelling anything. So, okay. Let's also then now talk about the automations happening in their table. So we'll go to our automations tab here. And I have just three automations occurring here. So one sending data from Airtable, that's going to send it to make and open AI. So that open AI is built into our make automation. We have one that then sends um, any data from make to Webflow from Airtable. So Airtable to make to Webflow. And then we have this next automation, which is around status change. So changing the status to scheduled when a record, when a record matches a specific condition. So what that condition is, if it's approved, and the publishing date is not empty. So that's going to change it to, right? So we just have that status and that's going to come into play a little bit later. Let's start with sending data to make an open AI. So the way we have this set up is we have our conditions here. So trigger when a record matches this specific condition from in this table. So my content themes and shows table. And here are my conditions when the status is any of the, the following. So generate idea, generate full blog post, edit, regenerate images, generate outline. Those are going to be the conditions or the statuses that trigger the script to be run. Now, what does that script look like? If we come into here, I just have a script that uses a custom variable and you can add the input variable here. I just called mine record ID and it takes in the value of the actual air table record ID and it pulls that or pushes that and connects the two using the webhook URL. So you can go ahead and, and take a copy and paste or type out this script here. And then your webhook URL, this you're going to get back here when you're in make. And just like I had it here, you know, we have this webhook component that I created here. And then we're just going to go ahead and create a webhook. And then it's going to give you this link. You're going to take that link and paste it in your webhook URL. So essentially it's using the record ID as an input and it's sending that specific 
ID into our Airtable or, or using it from our, our Airtable database, getting the record, and then being able to route it to these different workflows based on the status that we set, right? So if it's a generating idea, if it's generating a blog post, an outline, it's going to follow these different workflows based off the filtering that we established here. Our Airtable. So let's just actually go back one step. So if we could finish editing that and that's it, you have that script set up and then we can, we'll come back to the second script when it comes to sending the data to Webflow. Very, very similar, except we are building out a separate workflow within Make. So now let's talk a little bit about what the Webflows look like within Make. So we have that webhook, right? That communicates with our Airtable database or triggers the, the command here. And then our Airtable, we're just, again, pulling that record ID. So this is that variable that I created using the webhook. So it's capturing that input and referring to that as the, which record we're going to pass down the specific workflow. So I chose the proper base, the proper table and the record ID. That's it for the Airbase. Then we're going to set up one of these flow controls components called a router. And the router is just going to take our inputs coming in and based off of the filtering I have here, it's going to filter based off the status and take that workflow, like I mentioned before. So in this case, generating an idea, this is when the condition of the status is set to generate idea, it's going to take this workflow. So we're going to come up here. We're going to go to generate idea. This is going to create a completion prompt using text da Vinci number three. And this is my prompt. So I have generate one idea for a blog post within the category of my content category. This is a variable I'm pulling from my Airtable database since we just retrieved that through our webhook and the subcategory of, and then my subcategory. So that's also the column that I'm using for my subcategory. So it's using these two inputs within the prompt, right? Dynamically, essentially to create the output for this specific generate idea prompt. The idea should be a maximum of two sentences. I gave it a max of 1000 tokens, which is probably way too much. Temperature 0 0.5, 0 0.6. I've been playing around with this a little bit. And then I left everything else pretty at default settings. So it's going to get ahead and generate that idea. And once that's done, it's going to update a record, update the Airtable record that we just pulled in. So what do we want to update? It's going to refer to the ID that we're pulling in. So we want to add the record ID is ID from the Airtable database then we are coming down into our idea description column and we're going to input this is the input for that open ai generation idea here so the way that looks if i were to start from the beginning so i just trim it out just to remove any white space and then you see it brings up some of the search items here and in the generate idea create a completion step we're going to come down to choices and text you can see it has a it has the output here is in text Sometimes it, it's in message if you're using chat GPT or a chat prompt, but in this case, I'm using create a completion prompt. So it's going to be choice.txt or choice text. It's in a, it's an array essentially. Cool. So that's it. We're only generating an idea. Everything else can stay blank, but it's going to be the same methodology as we are using OpenAI's API to actually generate these next steps of content. Right. So let's go ahead and just get started on some of these. I'll also show you really quickly. When we come down to create an outline, this is also what it's using. It's going to leverage now the idea description, which we created already in our previous step. So there's this, there is a kind of a workflow or a step process that you would want to follow. And you can customize and change that depending on your workflow. In this case, I have idea first, outline, blog content, pretty much just to keep it simple for now. But you definitely want to take into consideration a bunch of the, the other kind of optimized workflows when it comes to building out a piece of content, right? We're not just going to. I'm not going to go down on the SEO rant, but you're going to want to make sure that you're building it for a purpose, right? Making sure that what you're targeting in terms of keywords or a topic or a topical segment makes sense and that it's targeting the right search intent essentially for what you're, what the content is about and what you're creating. Is it achievable to even rank for this, right? What does the SERP landscape look like? Are you adding value to users there that are already landing on the competitive pages? Is it, does it make sense, right? Is it, is it worth putting your time into? So that's a whole nother video in and of itself, but just go, getting back on track and talking about the workflow. This is, I use a create a prompt completion here. I'm using the same model text da Vinci, and I'm just saying, generate a comprehensive outline for the following blog idea. And then my blog idea is using that variable or that input that we already had generated when we did the generate idea step. So now we're, we're building off of this. And then I have 12, 1200 tokens. Right, temperature is 0 0.7. I play around with temperature a little bit just for the creativeness of the actual content itself. 
0 0.5, 0 0.7 is usually where I play around in terms of just adjusting that. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And let's go ahead and move that bar out the way. There we go. So now let me jump back to Airtable into our data. So let's say we wanted to create one here. So we wanted to create a content category, subcategory article with for this, for charging stations. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to save my changes. I'm just going to make sure this is turned on. Yep, all my automations are turned on. So I have one for generating blog content, the other one for publishing to Webflow. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to set the status to generate idea. So now that webhook is being triggered to now communicate with our make workflow. And you can see it, we could actually see it live. It took the path right here and actually already updated our Airtable record. There you go. How to find the best EV charging stations near you, a step-by-step -step guide. Okay, pretty general, but it does reflect the inputs we gave it in terms of, you know, creating an idea based off our content category and subcategory. So let's say we decided to keep it. I'm just going to remove these quotation marks. It's a, it's a text field. So you can come back here and just make those changes. You can see now our status returns back to an idea, which is great. So now for me, for my workflow, just so you can guys get an idea of how to almost templatize this, I'm going to now say, all right, we have an idea. Say I made my edits, say I kind of vetted it out already, did my due diligence, did my research. I'm going to go ahead and generate an outline. So same process here again, it's triggering that automation, calling that script. That script is communicating with make our make workflow. And now it should take the flow, boom, going down to create an outline and then go ahead and update our Airtable record. So we should see that, we can actually see that being done live here. If we sit and look at the actual content outline section here, there we go. And you can regenerate these as you see fit or even make the edits or change your prompts, make those a little bit better. So here's the intro, right? It gives me step one, step two, step three, kind of that kind of format all the way down to the conclusion. So we got about six subheadings, I'll say maybe about five, not including intro and conclusion. Of course, with any AI generative tools, you want to review, edit the review and edit these outlines or these ide ideations and the actual content itself. You don't want to just kind of generate and publish. No, you don't want to do that. But for the sake of time for this workflow and this introduction, this, this demo, if you will, we're just going to say this is okay. And we're going to go to our next step here which is going to be like, all right, we like our idea. We like our content outline. Let's go ahead and generate a full blog post. So now same thing. The automation is looking at our status. It's taking this record, bring it into make. And now make is calling onto the actual Airtable database record. And it's looking at the one that the status changed to generate full blog posts. And it should now throw it into this, this workflow up here, right? It's now going to say, oh, your status is generate full blog posts. I'm going to start creating body content, the title, the SEO summary, and generating images. Sometimes, depending on the time of day or the day of the week, OpenAI servers might become busy or there might be an outage that you're not aware of. And sometimes you may need to re-trigger some of these things. So that happens time and time again. I know it's been, there's been a few outages this past weekend as of the date of this recording. So keep that in mind when you are building out these workflows. I mean, we are saving a ton of time in terms of getting that first draft going right before publication. So in the long run, it still saves us a lot of time. So for example, if something doesn't initiate right off the bat, and this is a good view to see, you know, there's going to be some hiccups. I just clear out the status, re-trigger, and let's see if it actually go ahead and re-triggers our workflow again. There we go. So this happens time and time again, but you can see now it's going down our generate full blog post workflow, right? All the way down to generating images. And I have three set to be generated, just so you have some options to choose. When we actually map all this data into Webflow, Webflow only utilizes the first image as the actual hero or featured image of the article. So keep that in mind. I just give us options, you choose the best one. So for example, like this one has three, you know, we could say we don't want that one. We want kind of the, the magazine one here for buying options and we'll keep that. So as I'm doing that, you can see now this whole row just started to populate with data. So there goes our hero images rendering up in terms of, um, in this field, we have our blog title. So we went from our idea of how to find the best EV charging stations near you, a step-by-step -step guide. Okay. The idea to the ultimate guide to locating the best EV charging stations near you. That's our blog title, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just remove these quotation marks. Open AI's output likes to leave the quotation marks in here. And then we also have our blog content, which came out to about 431 words. You know, so relatively short. So there's definitely going to be, be some additional context added to this that 
match you know the intent we're trying to target in terms of the organic SERP landscape, if you will, but not to digress too much. So there you go. It it actually respected our outline in terms of the headings it, it chose to write for and the content it provided, which is awesome, right? It's a good starting point. And I'm gonna show you the next feature here is editing notes. So you see, I've utilized this in some previous records here. I'm gonna go ahead and put in kind of a like a command here. So highlight the headings so I can show you what this looks like. So you saw our headings weren't highlighted, right? In our blog content. And this is a rich text editor. So you can go ahead and bold, italicize, linked, uh, internal links, things like that into that. So I selected or I inputted highlight the headings. So our status is now set to blog post generated because we just completed that step. I'm going to go ahead and go down to edit because I just made it edit. And edit is going to use the edit completion model in OpenAI. This is going to use our editing notes here as the command or the prompt to then apply that to our blog content. So if you look here, it looks like it just added some markdown, which in some cases, there you go. It, for some reason, it didn't have the space. So it might be tricky sometimes. I get it more times out of, than not, it does actually highlight. But you see it added the pound pound for H2s. So it's all done in markdown here, which is pretty nice. So it, sometimes that happens. It forgets to add a space. You know, but it just helps you, you know, if the, if the content's actually longer, it'll help you save some time. So you could do things like fix the grammar, so on and so forth. You can look at the documentation for more of the edit completion commands. Cool. So now so let's say blog post generated. We, we look at the images, let's see, charging stations. We, I don't know, we don't like this one. I don't know what that looks like really. Let's say we like this kind of motor trend looking right image. All right. That's our camera image. We're going to go with that. We're going to save that. We have two published now. So what we can do is I'm going to say, all right, this article is approved. Great. So I also have a few different views here within this Airtable base. So we can look at by look at it by vertical, which is just grouped by the content category. And this is a nice view when you can see your specific content separated out into the different categories, right? This is a very nice view. You can see it by series stage in terms of the, the status, right? Where it's the status is at, which is also just the, the Kanban view, which is nice. So I have my approved here. We could also move it into scheduled. I think what most people would like to use in terms of the view and scheduling and building out a content calendar is the content calendar view. So you can come over here. You see, we had about three uh, other posts published in the past. So I'm gonna come over here and open up this sidebar and this just shows us all our records, right? These are just the blank ones that I haven't removed. And this is the one we just created and set to approve, hence the, the light green color there. So what you could do is go ahead and click and drag. So for this sake of this, I'm gonna, drag it to a previous date so it could publish and you could see the publishing workflow. So I go ahead and so, and the status gets changed to scheduled, right? It's published to be, to be published as it turned dark green. So that's part of the workflow, right? Part of the automation I built in before, and I'll show you again. And now since it has a date and a publish, a published or scheduled rather status that triggers the Webflow publishing automation through make, if that makes sense, let's go through it. So you see it turned black, which means it was published. So when that happens, the automation, let's go back to our automations. When we schedule something after it's been approved, whether it's through setting the date manually or using the content calendar view to drag and drop, that's when we, we saw this. So when status is approved and publishing date is not empty, which means what we saw here, we, we dragged it to a specific date. So that date was populated and then changed to approved. So that switches it to scheduled right there. Scheduled, now, when something is set to scheduled, it then sends our piece of content in Airtable to another view, which is content to be published. So when there, when there is a record in there, and you could just copy how I have it here, when content or an art or record in Airtable is set to be published, this then runs the script to trigger the make Webflow for publishing to the, the make workflow to publish to Webflow, if that makes sense. So it sees that enters that published state or that scheduled state content to be published, and then triggers our other workflow back here. Right. We have our, our new webhook URL that we created for publishing to Webflow. And we have the same exact script, except we're using a different hook, right? Because it's we're using a different workflow within make. Right. So we have our different hook. We're using the same setup in terms of the input variable, passing the error record ID into the workflow right here. And now it again gets or retrieves a record from Airtable. So the same setup as we had previously. But now what I'm doing is using this markdown converter component. So what this does is it can convert Markdown to HTML, HTML to Markdown, 
and I believe some other formats as well. So doing that, we can convert it to HTML and only the body content. So if I click this, I'm only converting the blog content, right? So that's the content we curated using OpenAI. And that's it, pretty simple. I have another router component to give me two kind of workflows when it comes to Webflow. The, the scheduled, so this is scheduled and published, or when I make updates to a piece in Airtable to also replicate that update in Webflow without going into Webflow manually and doing that. I can do it all and try, the goal is to work out of Airtable if we can, as much as possible. So when I schedule that, the filter here, and if I click on here, it went down this, this route here. So scheduled, this is the, the condition it looks like. So when something's ready to be published, here we go. And I choose my wondrous site. So that's just your site ID. Once you connect Webflow into make.com, right? My post collection is post or my collection ID rather is post. Yours might be different depending on the Webflow instance, the, the theme you installed in your setup. But fundamentally, these are gonna be the fields we're populating, right? An article thumbnail using the, the hero image URL from Airtable. So we have our hero image and we're using the URL right? Because that's, that's how we're, we're tracking it or linking the two. Same thing with the article header image is just the same as the thumbnail. In this case, the title we're mapping to our blog title post content. We're mapping to HTML, which is the converted output we have from the markdown component. So you can see up here that HTML and then author and category. These are just specific IDs to tying into the author myself. That's my unique ID within Webflow and then a unique ID category within Webflow. For my setup, I just needed to have something in here since they are reference fields. And this category is just a generic category. It might be more dynamic based on your setup, but you can find this information within Webflow. And the SEO summary, this is a custom field I created within Webflow. So that way I can I can just map it to meta descriptions. So that way my meta descriptions is always, always being populated with what I generated using OpenAI, using the SEO summary field that raw text that we created within Airtable. So if I change this here, it also gets changed and updated within Webflow. Name, just the blog title, and that's it. And then I have it to archive no, draft no, and always publish to live. And that's how I have that set up. So that's how it, all the records go when I change to publish. Then the other contrary part of this, when it's changed to update, now let's go ahead here. I wonder if I not equal to, actually, I don't think I need to change that. I'll just leave that. So we have our filter here, the other route, which is update. And this is when you make an update to Airtable, it'll then publish and update that record. Same thing here. We're looking at our site posts and we're referencing all the fields we just talked about, because if we want to make changes to any of them, we want to make sure that they're updated into Webflow. And then all I update when it comes to the update workflow here is just Webflow ID and the updated on. Essentially, I probably don't need the update ID because we already are building that in. So I'm gonna actually remove that. We are actually already capturing that when we publish. So all I need is the updated date, right? Because I just wanna see or make, keep track of when content's updated. And that's the, the two workflows really, they're relatively simple. And I'm gonna go ahead and save these changes. If I jump into my work, Webflow instance here, you can now see I have in my, my homepage, it just shows the latest, the latest posts. I'll go ahead and refresh for you guys. Here we go. So that's our article we just literally published. If we come into our, CMS collections here and our post collections that we talked about before. You can see I have my other blog posts here. And here goes the last one we just created. You can see article header, article thumbnail, right? Our intro, our post content all marked up properly because we, we converted it to HTML is our author, right? So the way, again, how I got author and category IDs, if you ever need them, I went to my team members. These are just some pre-populated ones besides myself. I clicked on myself and I was able to capture the item ID. So if you're the one publishing, one thing I, I noticed is that maybe, and maybe I just haven't figured this out within Make, but I try to capture a specific collection details and reference these IDs within, within the workflow, but it would have involved a little more time in setting up. So maybe even having a database of these IDs and creating that within Make and having a custom database would help even speed that up a little bit faster. But it really wasn't too much trouble at all because you could always come and add that in later. Again, you're saving so much time with the, creating a workflow like this, and especially if you tailor it to how you perform or how you work, it's gonna make the world of a difference. You can add in the specific like key keywords or just, you know, NLP type words that you're looking for and doing research with Surfer or Phrase or, or Through, any of these different tools that you're utilizing to gain some SERP um, competition analysis and you wanna add that specific context into your workflow, you can. We could just add more columns for it 
make sure we build it out where it makes sense, even add more particular, if we call, go back to the generating blog content, this could just be a content generation as a, as a whole, right? We can talk about generating ideas, looking at buyer personas, generating that workflow, building specific content around that buyer persona or different parts of a user journey, right? We can have these different workflows that are automated in terms of just setting up triggers and rolling that out. So what I wanted to show next and finally is that we can also leverage ZimWriter, one of my favorite tools I've been using as of lately. So let's go ahead and launch ZimWriter. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. There we go, yes. So if you don't know what ZimWriter is, we can spend a whole video on this as well. It is a uh, application developed by Matt Zimmerman. He's great. And this is a, a locally installed program application, if you will. It's not a web application and it utilizes OpenAI, it's API. It's connected to my specific API key. So we're still using OpenAI servers and their AI. Right now it's on using leveraging GPT 3.5 for text completion. And it has a bunch of these different magic commands in terms of generating content. So if we bring up an example here, I can bring up a WordPad. And the greatest thing about Zimmerman, one of the, the USPs or the unique selling points of this product is that it's low cost to enter, very low barrier. And secondly, you can use it in any text field, right? I know there's a lot of different extensions now for all these generative AI tools, but this you can literally use anywhere there's a text field, anywhere, in a browser, outside a browser, within Microsoft Word, Google Docs, in a Notepad, Notepad++, wherever you see fit, Notion, Obsidian, wherever you wanna use this. So I can just write things in commands here. So I'm gonna show you what the magic command trigger looks like. And this will all make sense into why I'd incorporate it into this workflow in just a second. We can say something like why or why is the sun yellow? To me, it's yellow. We highlight it and I'll hit my command trigger, control one. So I'm asking the AI this, right? Open AI as if, as if I was within like playground or in chat GPT. Control one initiates that communication. That's just the trigger I have set up. The sun is yellow because it emits more light in yellow and green wavelengths than other wavelengths of the visible spectrum. This is due to the fact that its surface temperature, when it, which is around 55 100 degrees Celsius is relatively cool compared to other stars. Okay, cool. So now I can hit control two, I'll highlight all that. And essentially this should actually continue writing, right? Zimwright is continually writing. The sun's color can also appear to be white or blue depending on the location and time of day. This is because of the scattering sun, of the, the scattering of the sun's light by the surf, by the earth's atmosphere, right? So you can go on, it's, it's pretty good context too, right? It's really nicely written. So I can keep high highlighting this control and continue with the writing. So the trigger for that is control two, as opposed to control one, which initiated this. You can actually also rewrite using control three. And then there's three other slots here that we can set up with custom magic command triggers. And you can set that all up in advanced triggers, so on and so forth. There's other features here in terms of, you know, a blog writer, SEO blog writer, a bulk blog writer that really have really well fine, well tuned and fine tuned prompt engineering to get really high quality outputs. But in this workflow, what I wanna show you is leveraging just these magic commands within our workflow to show you that you can just not, you don't have to only use ZimWriter as a standalone tool. You could also use it in a workflow that you are automating just like this. Let's say, or we could just close out this notepad now. So remember what I said, we can actually trigger this within any text field, right? So if I come back to my blog content here, I could either open it and perform my work here in this little box, or if we just open the whole record, right? Expand the whole record, we can come down into our blog content section, which again is a rich text editor, right? So we can make these changes. And what we can do is maybe look and see where we want to add more content specific to any of these subheadings, right? Develop driving habits, properly maintain your EV. So regular maintenance is essential for prolonging the life of your EV battery. This includes checking the battery's charge level, temperature and voltage, as well as inspecting for wear. So I'm gonna highlight this. I'm gonna hit control two. I'm gonna say, continue writing. Great. So it actually just put in this whole paragraph here. So it is also important to charge an EV battery regularly as a battery that is fully drained may be more susceptible to damage. In addition, it is important to ensure that the charging process is done properly and in accordance to the manufacturer's guidelines. Furthermore, it is recommended that you use an EV battery charger that is speci specifically designed for your model of electric vehicle to ensure that the battery is charged safely and effectively. Finally, it is important to use safe charging practices, such as keeping the battery away from sources of heat and always unplugging the charger once the battery is fully charged. Not too bad. 
I mean, what we had originally was regular mains is essential. This includes checking batteries, charge level, temperature, voltage. So we kind of went into a little bit deeper definition or explanation of this initial paragraph. And what we can do is we can highlight this and hit control two. Say, I want to continue writing. And it uses this as look back context for the API. And now it says it's also important to drive your electric vehicle responsibly in order to prolong the life of your battery. Driving has such a rapid acceleration and hard braking can put a strain on the battery and just overall lifespan. So we might be able to change some of this because you see it says it is also, it is also important, it is also important. Maybe we can definitely change that, but we're getting more context on the topic of properly maintaining your EV, right? The whole thing is not to just kind of run it and publish it. We have to give this a once, twice over when it comes to editing, but I just generated two additional paragraphs I didn't have before on properly maintaining your EV. This is definitely better than what I had with just those three lines generated initially, right? To get us started. Of course, we're gonna have to go ahead and do some, some checking here with Grammarly and check our grammar and all that, right? But you can see the power here. It's all done here. And I can hit, go ahead and say, say we already checked this over. I can close this out. That's done. That's great. Same thing here. If I come back to our ultimate guide on locating the best EV stations, let's look at this, right? We have our content outline. Let's do it again. Introduction. Consider your needs. Take note of your location. When choosing a tar charging station, it is important to consider your location. Online maps can help, so on and so forth. So let's highlight this and hit Control 2 and see what other information it gives us on taking note of your EV charging stations. It is important to consider the features offered by charging station, by the charging station. Different models have different features, such as digital display integrated into the payment system. Additionally, you should research the charging station safety features. Okay, so we have some more additional information there. Say that was all good and, and clear. We can keep going if we want. What's also important is if we come back into Zimwriter and we come into our, our advanced triggers, we could actually put in some background information for our triggers that we're, we're launching, right? This is the following effect. This, the following effects, magic commands, continue writing and rewriting triggers until you quit Zimwriter. So I can give even more background context here. Right, enable literary devices, which is a nice feature. Enable lists. I can change the voice. I can make it more personal. So I'm going to show you what this outline, this uh, output looks like. Audience personality. I'm just going to say explorer. These are based off like brand archetypes. If you want to look that up. So I'm going to head and save that. Update save data for background. I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm actually going to take. I forgot the 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 limit on the background text. But what I'm going to do is say we wanted to maybe use. Uh, let's see. Let's focus on consider your needs. So maybe we wanted this outline here. I actually never tried this. I'm trying this on camera live. Background information is just the outline. So let's say that. And then I'm going to update to save this. And I'm going to minimize this. We're on step two. So we're going to come down to step two. This is what? Consider your needs. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. And I'm going to do control two to continue writing for this section. I gave it some background information in terms of the outline that was for this specific section. I've also gave it more context in terms of what's already there. So let's see what we got. Step two, took away our formatting a little bit. Once you considered, it is also important to consider where you, whether you prefer public or private charging, right? Public charging stations are usually less expensive, but can be busy. When choosing the right station for your needs, it's important to consider the cost of installation, level one, level two, which can add to the overall cost. DC fast charging stations require additional electrical upgrades. That's good to know. What you could also do is if you change the sidebar, your revision history, you can see all the changes we're doing here and making as we go, right? So we can see, what was this 15 minutes ago? Come back up to ultimate guide, show more. We can see all the changes and all the things that we just added or removed for this specific section, all activity. So you can, you can adjust this and see as you, as you see fit. So we have some information there, which is great. We can go ahead. I'm going to see what else we can get. One more paragraph maybe out of this. Here we go. Messes up the formatting a little bit, but nothing we can't fix except two. So that finally, it is important to consider the long-term costs associated with electric car charging. Depending on the type of charging station you choose, you may need to pay for electricity to power the station. Additionally, some charging stations may require regular maintenance or upgrades, which can add to the overall costs. It's important to research all the long-term costs associated with electric car charging before making a decision. So there's definitely some tweaks we can make in this section. But again, it's giving us starting points, it's giving us our draft, right? It's allowing us to enhance the content we're looking for using ZimWriter. I can even come back and give in more specific background information in terms. So it actually went ahead and did the analysis of different charging speeds. 
and it went ahead and also discussed the benefits of public and private. It did that. So it, looked, it used our background information, and that's the power here. We can give it even more background information from not only what we're highlighting, and there are specific limits here, but you can see if you're doing this in, in kind of piecewising it together, it's going to be incredibly powerful. So thank you, Matt, for you know, coming up with ZimWriter and, and sharing this with us. Definitely can see it helping in my workflow. As we now have, we scroll over, we can see we have almost doubled the size of this article and we just focused on one section, right? It was around 300 words before and we're at the 662. It's not all about word count, but we definitely need a helpful, contextual, concise article, right? That's going to help and, and have value. So if we can do more research and add more relevant context to these pieces of content and, and automate the flow, I think that's going to be great. So one thing we should be able to do now is hit update. I've been having a little trouble with this one lately in terms of it actually updating to Webflow. But by the time I get this video out, I should be able to have that figured out. All right, so I figured it out here. All I did was create another automation. I could show you here. What I did is pretty much I, I duplicated the one I have here for send data to make in Webflow. I duplicated the same script with the same webhook, everything, because I wanted to utilize the same workflow. But for this instance, it triggers when the status update is changed to update rather than before we have it when something's entered into a piece of content as published. So <clears throat> had to differentiate that for whatever reason, just to make it, to make it work. So just to show you guys that what I did here, so update data to, to make, and then send it to workflow. This is when we make any changes to any fields within Airtable, and we hit update as a status, it then sends that over to Webflow and makes the same update. So whether it's like the blog title, blog content, any of the fields we matched over when we first published, it does that. So when a record matches the conditions in my content themes and shows table, when the status is update, it runs this script, which is the same exact script for so if you copy this one here, we created a record ID variable, which matches to the rec Airtable record ID. It's the same exact script and webhook that we use for the send data when we're actually just publishing as opposed to updating. And that's it. So now when we come into data, let's say we had the, the ultimate guide. I could say something just so we can make it apparent. The ultimate guide, I'll just put 2023. Let's just say that in the beginning with brackets, just so we can visually see the change. So now I should be able to go status change, go to update, and we should actually see this play out to the update route in terms of updating the content. There we go. Goes to the update, updating published item. Boom. So now if we come into Airtable, we should now see an updated on date, which is 321. We made the update. And if we go into Webflow, we now have, and we refresh our collections, our post collections page, and go to collections, posts, you now see we added or updated, it passed over the 2023 we created in brackets there. So just wanted to quickly show you guys that last feature here, kind of the full-fledged automated workflow with editing content, building into using Airtable as a database and building out, building in the automations there with scripts, using Make to integrate the different flows from Airtable all the way to Webflow. And then of course, using Webflow to host our site as a blog and leveraging, of course, OpenAI's API in generating our content. A lot of the magic here is going to be in how you actually prompt the AI to generate the output, right? So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Hopefully it opened your mind to the different possibilities of things you can do and automate when it comes to your, your content workflows. Again, you can expand this out into focusing on special keyword segments or getting additional background information on competitor websites and using that and feeding that into the AI to create better outputs and to designate and match these specific content pieces to the user journey or the buyer's journey, different stages of the funnel, right? When it comes to just user acquisition, if you're, if you're kind of approaching your content strategy at that point, at, from that perspective. So. Yep, hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions, thoughts, or feedback, please leave it in the comments. Feel free to check out any of the other videos I have around building blogs and using generative AI tools to create blog content. Take care. Have a good one, guys.